Well, yeah, how's everybody doing? Got this project here. Um, this is a Model T torque tube. Goes to the rear end from the transmission. And it's on a snowmobile. Model T snowmobile. Um, this is an old shaft that a guy had been using for a pry bar for years. But the splines are correct. Even though... It needs a little filing and stuff. He's been using it for a pry bar, so. But he wants to use this one versus this real nice one down here. Now, this one down here measures an inch 190 right here. And this is where it rides in a bushing. So, this one up here that's rusty only measures uh jesus it's like uh eighty thousands less or ninety thousands less um yes yeah, 106 so yeah basically eighty five thousands or so less um so that might be well, it's not a decided factor because we're going to make this one whatever we need it to be. But I got to go in and mic the bushing in here. Make sure I make this the right size. Because what we're going to do is cut this shaft off at 50 and a half inches. That's the total length. And we're going to put this whole outside profile on that end when we cut it off. But before we do that... We've got to take this right here where that hammer mark is. I think you can see that. This has got a bend right here. So I'm going to bend, straighten that, and uh, we'll get that straightened. Then we'll, uh, and we'll also sand it up while we're at it. And then we'll go ahead and see if we can't put it in a chop saw, chop 12, 14 inches off it, and make something out of it. So I'll bring you along. I don't know if you can see that or not, but right here is running true on the main shaft, and where it was originally manufactured, it's not. And you can see that the depth of cut is almost flat there, and it's probably 30, 35 thousands here. And I've been chasing this thing for probably an hour trying to get it perfectly straight. Well, you can't. I just finally put it in the lathe to see what was going on. Apparently, this thing had a sweep in it when they manufactured it, and they didn't worry about it. Um, that's probably why it's got a sweep to it. So anyway, I'm gonna uh, go ahead. I'm not gonna worry about this little out around business here, out here on the main shaft. I'm gonna clamp it here. This is gonna have a wiggle to it. And we're not going to worry about it. And we're going to turn the other end. And, you know, if we're clamped here, we should be pretty close within a few thousands. I got about three thousands run out in that chuck, which ain't bad. Um, I'm not going to do it between the centers. But anyway, we'll, uh, we'll do that in a second. Right now, I'm going to take a file to this and just uh, dress this up a little. See if I can't get the coupling to slide on. But I'm not going to film that. But I just wanted to show you folks that... You know, sometimes back in the day, I mean, I don't know. It's pretty hard work to see that, but there isn't much of a step there. You know, in that daylight. And yet, you come over to this side, and it's about twice as much. So this thing wasn't made perfect. This is back Model T days. So, anyway, I'm gonna shut you off. I'm gonna clean up this end. Then I'm going to flip it, and then we'll get to turning. Hello, everybody. We've been having a little trouble with this because of the harmonic cost. We're way out. So what I'm going to do, I finally got a high-speed steel that will cut it. But I'm going to just do this two and, I don't know what it was, two and a quarter inches. And get that down to size. That'll be for the snout that's got to be squared. I'm going to turn this down, and then I'm going to finish the rest of it by... Flipping the piece over, and that'll get me along. So I'm going to put you on uh, time lapse here, and you can just watch away.
Well, this should be the last pass on the snout, and I'm going to reverse the shaft, see if I can get it to run a little quieter. about it you can't let it dwell and we'll just break this edge a little bit right there while we're ahead. This should be about nine nine uh yeah 995. That's 996. I'm good with that. And that's just with a set of calipers so yeah. If I need it down a thousandths, which I don't, because this is going to be squared off. So the actual round surface doesn't even do anything. It's just getting it down close. So we're going to reverse all of our stuff. I'll shut you off. We'll flip this shaft. Well, I always store my steady rest back here. I got to take it off because I need that extra bit of piece of bed. I'll bring you back in a minute. Well, we'll see how bad this is going to holler.
Well, right now we're at 151 and a half and we're aiming for 125. I got about 26 thousandths left to go. So we'll make one more pass. And hopefully this will be the last pass on the turning part of it. three quarters of a thousand thunder. I ain't gonna worry about it. Just rides in a bushing. So we'll move over to the milling machine, see what we can do. Okay, we're over here at the milling machine. That snout diameter out here, which is where the square is gonna be, is 0.995. The uh, finished size is 13 16 which is 8 12. It's actually 8 12 and a half, but I ain't worrying about the half. Um, Got to take off 91 and a half on each side. So, you know, we'll take off 91, see what it comes out to. And uh, hopefully it'll be all right. By the time I touch down and notice my touch and then go 91, I'll have the 91 and a half probably, maybe even 92, but she'll work fine. So we'll see here what we can do. Make sure the quill's locked. I think we just touched. We are probably a good two thousands down. So matter of fact, I guess I'll measure that because I kind of want an accurate read on this. find the zero to one mics so I can fit them in there I'll be back so I was a thousandths and a half that I had gone down I might get which is good because we need to go which is easy we'll just go to 90 91 because I actually had the two already calculated in here that right there should be as far as we have to go Yeah, I'm gonna flip this over and I gotta get some one, two, three blocks and some spaces, probably an adjustable parallel to fit in right underneath that. And we'll snug it up to where it's all flat on the parallel. And that'll be close enough as far as getting it square. 
when I turn it 90 degrees, then I'm going to have to uh, probably run an indicator up and down. Or I may run a 1, 2, 3 block up to the side of it. Uh, either one will work. Like I say, it's not wicked critical. This is Model T stuff, so. Anyway, I'll be back in a minute. Hey, hello everybody, I got it done. This is a little gritty fit in. There is a little bit of slop, as you can see, but it's kind of gritty. There's crap on the inside. But according to the other shaft over there, I gotta have that hole drilled right there. So I'm gonna take the edge finder, find the center, and I'll eyeball it from the end. Cause I never really did get a measurement, but I guess I could do it with an edge finder. But uh, anyway, I'll be back in a minute here when I get set up. Creep that old girl in. Right there. Okay, that's on the Y, so we will clear. There, midpoint Y, perfect. Go back to zero, and we'll be in the middle. Right there. And then we'll come out here, we'll find the edge. We've got to go back seven eighths of an inch. Right there. So, we'll take that up, back that off a hundred thousandths. Well, actually, we'll just go back uh, 975 and we'll be right. And right there, we'll lock the table. That is where that needs to be drilled. Take this apart, put the drill chuck in, and I'll be back. So this Model T shaft has a 930 seconds hole. It needs to be drilled right here. That girl there needs some attention. Huh, yeah, I guess it does. I'll be back. Yeah, well, we got a different drill. That one there, for some reason, it won't hold an edge. Apparently, I've gotten it hot. So, this one here is going to be a 30, 40,000 small. I got a Run another drill through at the right size, but of course oil would help. But yeah, it didn't hurt the drill, man. I'm going to get into a different pack of drills and try a different one. Yeah, I guess I got a shot in it. 
Here, let's try this one. Wow. That just does not like that. Takes the edges right off of them. That is hard, apparently. So, guess what we're going to have to do is put it in reverse and slow it way down. And uh, I'll try it a couple times here off camera and see what it takes. Well, I just went through it. You can see I'm running uh, about 150 RPM. And it did go through. It didn't like it, but it went. So that is some, kind of some tough stuff. Don't know exactly what it is, but it's one of those things that's going to have a rivet driven through it. So I don't know if it really needs to be champed at all. I don't think the original ones were. I think I'm just going to leave it. Oh, yeah, I like it. I'll uh, take you over to the bench here and show you what we got done. Yeah, so anyway, as you can see, this matter of fact is not even gonna go on that one. So it's it's not my millimeter that's bad, it's something in the uh, in the yoke here. Um, you hang on, I'll tap that on. Yeah, well, we'll see here if we can't get this driven back to that hole. And it does go back, right there. So, that's a good snug fit. So, you know, <laughs> he Model T's, you know, a little slop here and there, but it's got a bush in here that it's got to go into. He'll have to drive that back off, or I can do it for him with a rubber mallet, plastic mallet. And uh, yeah, we got this in here, so it goes on and off good. So, yeah, anyway, you tap it and it'll come right off. Um, so that's the end of the job. That's a Model T drive shaft that's been shortened. Um, not much to it, just kind of an interesting thing, an oddball. But, you know, might want to show it to you folks. Um, yeah, if you like it, don't hesitate to hit the old thumbs up button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. We'll talk to you later.